Narifilwe Lidwaba is a phenomenal woman who defines all odds and followed her dream to become a pilot. Her passion has propelled her after what she took a first flight with a female pilot for the first time. Now, in that moment, she knew that she wanted a career in aviation. Rifilwe, congratulations. I mean, I think it's, it says so much about a person to forget every and anything mm -hmm. and focus their entire being and their heart into what they're passionate about. And you've done exactly that. I believe that you were first a medical doctor or studying to be going to the profession of medicine mm -hmm. and now you're in aviation. Yes, hi. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's such an interesting story. So I studied a Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry and Microbiology, with the intention of going to medical school. And just somewhere in the middle, everything just changed. Uh, when I did take my first flight, I mm. think I was 17 years old, and I was traveling to Cape Town. And there was a female pilot, because I never knew that females could fly, let alone black people flying. Yeah. Where I grew up, I came from Limpopo. I, I've never seen a black pilot or a female pilot. So it sort of, sort of sparked that first interest that mm, perhaps it's something that I could do. But it was only two years later after yeah. university that I actually went into the aviation sector. Was there any fear attached to following this dream? I mean, these are two different uh, professions mm -hmm. and you kind of fearlessly threw everything in the air and still went for it. Obviously, there, there was fear, fear of the unknown. I mean, obviously, and as well, my family didn't know what was happening. Um, you know, becoming a pilot, they were, they were okay with the fact that I was going to become a doctor, but didn't quite know the aviation industry. And obviously, flying as well, it's quite scary. Yeah. It's something else when you fly as a passenger, but when you actually take that first flight as somebody that has been, you know, you've been taught how to fly, oh it's a different story. Because I remember one of my first flights, I was actually mm -hmm. literally holding my instructor because now you're up there and you're looking down and it's actually quite a way down. I can imagine. So, and it's not something that I have done or something that I, I was sort of used to. So it, it was a little bit daunting, mm. but just like a car, you know, I remember as well, the first time that I drove a car, I was sitting like this on a steering wheel. But after a few years, you're like So what goes like through this. your mind when you're sitting mm -hmm. there and you're taking on this incredible cockpit and you have such a huge machine behind you that you need to drive. What are those feelings and emotions that are going through you? Do you know, funny enough, um, when you fly and you're literally carrying the passengers, sometimes you're, little, you're isolated. So it's like only that small space yeah. where you're probably flying with a captain or you're flying alone. And at some point, you know you're carrying passengers, but at some point you're so focused on the job at hand mm. that you land and you realize, oh, I just carried, you know, sort of these many people. So there's just a whole lot of, you know, a lot of things to do. And obviously the takeoffs and the landings are still, you know, thrilling. They're quite exciting. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it's different. You know, every takeoff and every landing is, is amazing. It yeah. Is. yeah. You never get over it. Yeah. And the different stages, I suppose, that you take throughout the journey mm -hmm. kick in a different level of adrenaline within you. Yes. Yeah. I can only imagine that you've gone through a lot, having to prove your yourself in mm -hmm. a male dominated space mm -hmm. and especially as a black female. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the challenges that you had to overcome? So I think the initial challenge obviously being one of the first in the SAPS, you know, you have to sort of chart the way. You've got small little things like uniform, you know, they, they didn't make uniform for at, the, at that point for female pilots. So you have to wear like sort of baggy, yeah. you know, baggy uniform. Um, factors such as weight, you know, when I flew helicopters, they had a weight restriction. You had mm -hmm. to weigh sort of a minimum of um, 60 kg to fly solo. Wow. And I used to f weigh like 40 something kg. So I used to walk around with a big bag <laughs> sort of to balance you <laughs> know, Reveal my, you know. my center of gravity. So th those are the things that, uh, but obviously there's, obviously as being one of the females, mm. he, there, were, there were probably one or two guys that obviously had to get used to the fact that you know, you, you know, you're there yes. culturally. So there were a lot of funny stuff. I remember, you know, as ladies, we like we like to sit like this. Yes. And when you fly helicopters, you literally have to sort sit of like open this. your legs and have your side kick in between. Mm. And your instructor will tell you if you open your legs. And you're sitting there and you're thinking. And especially ah, culturally, yes. it, 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 it's yeah. looked down upon as a woman to sit with your legs open. Yes, open so that yes. shift in your mentality. It is a shift because now you have to like literally sit like this to be able to fly. Otherwise, wow. you put that side click and you just move it like this and you don't fly properly. So, so those are some of the, you know, some of the shift and some of the things that you really had to sort of think about. Now it's not a big deal. You get in, you just sit. Absolutely. And you, I mean, trust you know, in Bawoto yeah. to make a way regardless. Oh, no, you You've have created to. yeah. such an amazing plan. 
Habitat Form and Foundation yes. through the GFPA. Talk to me about it. So GFPA Foundation, it's still, it stands for Girls Fly Program in Africa. And the foundation was created based on some of the challenges. For example, I didn't know that I could become a female a, a pilot. So obviously we needed to you know, sort, of, sort of create a, a platform where we can mm. start raising that awareness about being a, uh, becoming a pilot. Number two, it's, it's very expensive. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't, I mean, to get your commercial pilot license, it's almost like paying up a bond. So mm. what are the avenues that are available? So again, the foundation gives that platform and that information. Mm. And I think what is most important, especially with girls, they become what they see. Yes. So I, when I was growing up, I only used to see Tom Cruise and Top Gun on TV. So I knew no, there's no way I could there's become no a pilot. There's no space for me. There's no space for me. But the moment I saw a female pilot, I was like, ah, perhaps there is space for me. Yeah. So we want to be there available, accessible through the foundation so they can Beautiful. see people that look like them, that are doing all this awesome stuff. And they can think, oh, I can do that. I can do that too. You know, I come from that area and she's doing this. I can do that. So, so we've got various programs within the foundation mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, not only for making way, but mm. actually ushering everyone on along with you on the journey. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs>